Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain. It's looking dirty today. We haven't cleaned that off in a few days, so we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, it feels good to be back. I'm ready to get back into the grind. I'm tired of feeling sorry for myself. I'm tired of feeling all this guilt and crap, you know. We got to get back on the grind. We're feeling way better. Our health is doing much better. Uh, yeah, let's let's get back on this grind. So I thought it would be fun to do a bit of a different video today. Um, also, one, to kind of practice getting back in the swing of making daily videos. And number two, because this is actually a video I've been wanting to make for a while, uh, doing like a Yu-Gi-Oh! retrospective on like the previous games, specifically like the World Championship games throughout the years. But I thought to kind of gauge interest in it, I thought that it would be best to look up if anyone has done a Yu-Gi-Oh! video game tier list, and sure enough, somebody has. Now, I want to go through all these games. Some of these are just spinoffs, like, for example, Wheelie Breakers, which is garbage. Um, but we are going to go through all of them. There are several games on this list that either one I'm not familiar with or two I just never played. Um, they're going to go in the still better than Master Duel, unless, like, I've heard that the game is garbage then we'll put it in the Master Duel level garbage. So just keep that in mind. Some of these games I haven't played, but I'll mention that as we go through. Just to go through our list here, we've got the God Tier level. This is the creme de la creme, uh, definitely far better than Master Duel, a.k.a. Master Shits, which we call it that until it'll be a good game, which, spoiler alert, it never freaking will be. Then we've got the really good games, and then we got the, I mean, it's a high category. Then we have the still better than Master Duel category, and then we have the Master Duel level garbage games. So, obviously, Master Duel level garbage. If Master Duel was on here, it would go in the Master Shits level garbage, because Master Shits is a pile of dog shit. It's garbage. It's hot dog shit. Um, yeah, it's dog water. You play in a format with Max C and then you're spending money on gems to get Yu-Gi-Oh cards that are basically NFTs. And guess what? NFTs don't have any value anyway. People always get pissed off and dislike the video whenever I say that. So I'm hoping that that's what happens on this one because people can't accept the fact that NFTs are totally worthless because you right click, you click save image as, and there you go. There's your NFT, Sugar Boo Bear. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, stop talking smack and just dive on into this here. So False Bound Kingdom, this is Master Duel level garbage. This game is god awful. I remember years ago, uh, shout out to an old buddy of mine, Master Fox 72 He used to post Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. I hope you did well, Pim. We did a, a duel video together where we played a 2002 format. And he talked about how the False Bound Kingdom like, guidebook was like super thick, like a textbook. This game is a real-time strategy game, but with like a Yu-Gi-Oh! skin. But yet the real-time strategy mechanics itself were terrible. I remember renting this from Blockbuster and it was garbage. It was also really hard which was really weird for something that was supposed to be a kid's game. Of course, if you bought it, then you had the three promo cards inside. But, like, the promo cards weren't all that good. We'll, we'll go through the promo cards if I can remember them off the top of my head. Um, like, one of these in here had the Infernity cards, which was it became absolutely insane later. So, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Power of Chaos game. So, we're going to kind of put all of these here together, if they are together. So the Power of Chaos games, what was interesting about these, I actually remember buying all three of these uh, from Walmart as they came out uh, with my dad. The Power of Chaos games were PC games that you would play against the AI, whether it was Yugi, Kaiba, or Joey. I don't know why they have a fourth one here, but these are the three games in this order that came out. And you had the three promo cards that actually back in the day were uh, prismatic secret rares before we ever had prismatic secret rares. So like the highest rarity of anti-spell fragrance is the prismatic secret rare out of the PC game, which is like $20. And you got it out of, I think it was the Yugi PC game before anti-spell was actually good. You got some really interesting prismatic secret rares out of these cards. And then you also had like a couple hundred card pool or something like that. Like the card pool was pretty small for the time. Um, but each PC game, when you signed in it was something like if you made the same account or like if you signed into the same account then your data would transfer over so like all the cards that you got in uh yugi the destiny once you started playing kaiba those cards would transfer over then whatever cards you had both of these it, they would transfer over to joey uh it had the voice actors for the characters so like it was fun to like duel against them in like a single or match mode setting you had dual tutorials this was really more of like a tutorial way to learn how to play Yu-Gi-Oh on a like computer game like a literal like you would put the disc in like type of computer game these have never 
been remade. Like, you can't get these off of Steam or anything. You can try and download them, like, off of, you know, like, a shady, like, ROM site. I've tried in the past, and every time I've tried, I've ended up with a virus on my PC. So I don't know how reliable it is to get these nowadays. Um, I'm sure that you can buy these PC games for cheap. If they're still sealed, I'm sure that they're a lot of money. But you can also get, you know, the Prismatic Secret Rares out of these for pretty cheap. They were tutorial games. Uh, people have modded them throughout the years to where you can play against different people and increase the card pool. Uh, so that makes them kind of fun to go back to. But other than that, these are definitely a good way to learn about the start of the game uh, and the basics of it. It's still better than Master Duel. Um, let's just go ahead and jump around here. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! What does this say? Oh, the Sacred Cards. Um, this game, did I ever play this one? I feel like I did. I'm going to put it in the It's I category. Um, I think I played this once. I don't remember if this is the one where like the attributes would factor into whether or not you destroyed a monster. Because I remember that there was one Game Boy game that I played where like I had a stronger attack monster than the computer's flame manipulator. But then when I attacked into it, the flame manipulator killed my monster. So there was something with like fire beats grass or something. And I think it was sacred cards, which if it's the case, it's master dual level garbage. If not, then it goes in the It's I category. And then, of course, you can see here the little uh, orange text there. There was three promo cards. These Game Boy games always have promo cards. Um, I'm putting this in the Master Level Garbage because I never played this game. Uh, same goes for this one. I never played this game. Uh, what is this? Dungeon Dice Monsters? No, this is something random. Uh, it had promo cards. I never played this one. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Online? N no, we never played that either. I've heard it's terrible. Um, let's see. This is... Oh, this is... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So... This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Dawn of... I think it's Dawn of Destiny. There was three promo cards in this one. This was an Xbox, original Xbox exclusive game. And did you know, actually, that the Wing Dragon of Raw that you got out of this game, it's not playable, but it's actually $50 at the time we were recording this on TCG Player. And uh, it was, like, one of the few ways, I think, at the time you could actually get a Wing Dragon of Raw. Um, it was basically just, like, a dueling simulator, like, where... Same with the Power of Chaos games, but basically on a grander scale where, like you went through the quote-unquote story mode, which was these triple duels where you'd have to be all three characters before your life points hit zero. Um, really interesting duel simulator, uh, definitely very slow compared to today's standards. Um, but it, it's fun for the nostalgia to go back to. It's okay. It definitely hasn't aged well. So I know I'm going to probably get crucified for this. I have not played any of the Tag Force games. I've heard that the Tag Force games are good, you know what, just because it's Tag Force, I'm going to put it in the still better than Master Shits category. That goes for all the Tag Force games because I, like I said, I just, I have not played any of the Tag Force games. I've heard that they're good. I just never played them uh, growing up. Um, Legacy of the Duelist. So I tried playing this when it first came out. It's awful. I'm sorry. Like, uh, there's so much DLC to it. You buy in so much just to get a bunch of DLC it really threw a lot of people off with how much DLC, like, do I need to get the DLC or not? Um, it was an attempt at, I feel like, after Konami made a bunch of the World Championship games, I feel like it was their attempt to try and put, like, a World Championship type of game on console, and it didn't pan out because, like, you had to buy the game, plus there was a bunch of DLC. Like, they really went overboard with the DLC, and it just ended up not working out. You know, it's it's not even really updated. Like, I still see from time to time people are like, can you please update the Legacy of the Duelist ban list? And it's it just couldn't recapture, like, what the World Championship games were. Um, Legacy of the Duelist, it just, it's not it. It's just not. Uh, what is this? Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, what does that say? Card Almanacs? I, I don't even know what that crap is. So this was like a double pack where, like, you got two Game Boy games in one. I'm just going to put it up here because uh, I... I think I have it. I think it came with, like, an eBay purchase, but I never played it. Uh, World Duel Carnival, I never played it. Uh, I'm sorry. For all I know, it's terrible. Uh, I don't know what this is. This is terrible. Uh, let's jump around here a little bit. Um, I think the Dungeon Dice thing was in here twice. I never played Dungeon Dice. This was something that they tried to take off, and it, it just never worked out. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Dual Transfer or Transer? I don't know what that is. Uh, that sounds garbage. So Wheelie Breakers, it, it's it's really garbage. I know I keep on saying that, but like this game is hot dog water. So you got the burning skull head, like skull head promo monsters in this. And then like the cards never took off. They were terrible. It wasn't like getting the Infernity cards in one of the uh, World Championship uh, games that popped off later. Uh, Wheelie Breakers was basically just a racing game that had really broken mechanics. And all you had to do was summon out Sonic Chick and then it would never be destroyed. 
Um, yeah, this is terrible. This is just a really terrible game. They tried to capture Turbo Dueling in it, and it just didn't work. Uh, oh, now we get into the good stuff. So it hasn't aged well, and I wish I could put it in God tier. Um, ah, fuck it. It's my tier list. Who cares? We're putting this in God tier. So Yu-Gi-Oh! Worldwide Edition Stairway to the Destined Duel. Now, this was one of the Game Boy games that pre was a precursor to the World Championship games that came out yearly. Uh, the Worldwide Edition game, what was cool about these Game Boy games was that they actually put cards in the game that weren't out during the time that, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! was going on. So, like, Mystical Ref Panel is in this game, and it functions like the actual card does today, but we didn't have the card in real life back in the uh, back at this time, because this was in, like, 2004. Really fantastic simulator. I have so many memories of my dad and I playing on, like, I would play on the GameCube on the big screen, and then he would play on the Game Boy, and we would duel that way. We learned basic rules of the game because of this, something that Master Shit still can't do properly, putting you through a campaign with the text boxes on the screen, explaining to you how the monarchs got birthed. Like, it's it's fantastic. Being able to go through, like, a little mini story mode by dueling the computer and, like, saving the day and building up your deck. Having cheat codes for these old Game Boy games really carried these games, too. Having access to all the cards. Yeah, the deck building aspect is very grindy in these games because of the fact that, like, the user interface hasn't aged well. So, it can kind of take a few minutes to build a deck. But, I mean, like, honestly, you could build anything in these decks and see success. Like, it's, it's actually really cool. Seeing, like, how many times you've beaten or lost to or gotten a draw with the computer opponents is really fun too um being able to participate in like weekend tournaments like in real life in the game was a really really nice addition um seven trials to glory uh we got to put this in the still master duel uh, still better than master duel category problem with seven trials to glory i actually have this game and every time i've gone back to it it's just so slow like the animations are slow the shuffling like yeah you can speed it up it's still slow you had a passcode system where like you could type in like the code of a card but if you got it wrong then you could never attempt to get that card again which is like how do they know that that's the card you're going for i don't know it was really weird um and anytime that you use the password machine even if you put in the password incorrectly then you lost your dual points so like it, it was really grindy really buggy um, I think they could have done a way better job. But being able to have the weekend tournaments that you could play into was really cool. There wasn't really a story mode. It was basically just weekend tournaments and dueling that you could do each day of the week. But then the ban list would also change each week. So it it yeah it didn't really take off, I think. I think that they definitely could have done better. Uh, I never played this one, and I actually can't read the name of it i'm pretty sure that this was like the game boy game that was like before worldwide edition because i know there was one that came out in like 2002 2003 that was basically like worldwide edition but like you just had random opponents to duel against um but i haven't played that one uh let's see this is a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. i can't even read that these pictures are so small but i never played it um same goes for this one i don't think i ever played this one yeah um either way worldwide edition is the best uh let's see Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Duel Academy. So this was also only for the Game Boy. Uh, I heard good things about it. I never played this one. It's still better than uh, Master Shits. Uh, they've got this one in here twice for some reason. Um, let's see. The PS1 game. It's still better than Master Duel. I never played it. I've seen gameplay of it. It's still better than Master Duel. I mean, there's, there's no question about it. I can't really speak on it other than that. Uh, let's see. So... GX Spirit Caller. I remember playing this back in the day. It's okay. Uh, it definitely focused more on the story mode. Of course, you've got the little orangey circle there for the promo cards. And honestly, some people just bought these DS games just to get the promo cards, which was actually really funny back in the day. But Spirit Caller was a decent campaign. I don't even think I ever beat it. Um, definitely story mode focused. I'll, I'll give them credit for that. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Ultimate Masters, really good. There's actually some bugs in this game that prevent you from opening all of the AI opponents. Um, so that's actually really funny, but similar to worldwide edition, you know, you get your promo cards, you've got your, uh, you know, AI opponents that you can duel against. Uh, we never played this, so we're just going to get this one out of here. This was the, this is the one I was talking about. The one that came out in 2002 that you could duel against opponents or, uh, computer based opponents. Um, you would just go through and duel against the AI and stuff. I think same for this one. I never played this one though. They got the PS one in here twice. So now we get into the world championship games. These are all absolutely fan freaking task now you're probably wondering avery how is it that all of these are god tier so all of these build off from each other right but what was cool about these ds games from 07 all the way up to 2011 is that 
Since you had the Wi-Fi system on the DS games, anytime that Konami put out a new ban list, you could actually download the latest ban list that was in the IRL game and put it into your DS and then also duel against people online, both in single and I believe also a match duel with decks that you could use in the IRL game. Of course, you had cheat codes to unlock all the cards and you also had campaign modes in these games. Like these are perfect blueprints, 2011 especially, since they built off of having extra content from each game. 2011 especially was a perfect example of like how to make a good Yu-Gi-Oh game, especially on the go. Like it, it was absolutely fantastic. Like I have, I think it's like the March 2012 ban list in World Championship 2011, which by that point exceeds had came out. But it goes to show how long Konami supported this game even after like exceeds came out and stuff 2009 of course being amazing because you got the infernity monsters as promo cards in this and i believe it was in the 2007 game that we got dimensional prison as a super rare which eventually became like a 60 dollar card because it was so good at the time and there was no other way to get it except through the game and finally like they reprinted it um but it was really funny that you had to get this game as either 07 or 08 to get dimensional prison and have like an amazing god card in the format at that time but like the animations in these games Games were so great for the time like yeah people say that they're dated but it's the fact that the gameplay is still solid the animations are still solid in these games you know if you have not seen gameplay or ever played these ds games these are the creme de la creme you have got to play these you know when you look at all the games that are sort of meh or like they're just okay or like they're hot garbage it's like what were konami thinking they're trying to reinvent a wheel that doesn't need to be reinvented make something like 2007 8 9 10 or 11 and run with it you know charge 30 dollars for it put three promo cards in it and you're good to go it's not like they have to be broken like the infernities like with stardust accelerator was or even don't put any promos in, but just make something that's like these games. These games are just, mwah, chef's kiss, fantastic. So, guys, let me know if you want to see a retrospective on, like, the World Championship games and stuff. Like I said, I wanted this to gauge sort of interest in it, but I've gone on long enough. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.